So as part of the settlement for their pyramid scheme lawsuit in Washington state, LuLaRoe is required to publish an income disclosure statement, something they haven't done since 2016 and should have been doing every year all along. Remember those claims of part-time work for full-time pay? So I just want to preface all this by saying this is my personal opinion and interpretation of the income disclosure statement that was recently released by LuLaRoe. And also math was always my worst subject in school. So if I have misinterpreted or miscalculated something here, um, please just leave a comment. And if I make any corrections, I'll post them as a pinned comment below. So I sold LuLaRoe for about two years total from 2015 to 2017. And the business was very different then. So that might inform some of my opinions of the state but I am absolutely not advocating or encouraging anyone to join this company. Although I was personally okay, many people have been extremely negatively impacted by LuLaRoe and hopefully this statement will help people see these risks more clearly now. Also, the people who sold LuLaRoe were called consultants during my time with the company, so I'm going to try really hard to use the current term of retailers, but please forgive me if I slip. So I've broken the statement down into kind of five sections for each of the graphs and the other information that they have provided here. So the first part is the opening information and explanation of the statement. So they explain that some retailers focus solely on personal sales and others build a team and earn leadership bonuses. Gross profits reflected here are a combination of retail sales, wholesale sales to other retailers, and leadership compensation earnings minus wholesale purchases from LuLaRoe and other retailers. So just a note, gross profit in a business sense is the total of all revenue minus the cost of goods sold. What's not accounted for here is all the other expenses consultants have that include shipping costs, display supplies, travel costs, et cetera, et cetera, but we will talk about those later. So next there's a graph of retailer gross profit and that's a combination of clothing sales and leadership earnings. So remember this is before accounting for shipping and supplies and other expenses. So LuLaRoe says that the average gross profit was $10,000 and the median was $1,400. And there is a footnote at the bottom of the document explaining that median is the midpoint of the data. So in other words, the mean is the average. So that's where you add up all of the earnings, divide it by the number of consultants. And that means that a very small number of people at the very high end or the very low end could skew the average in that direction. The median is the middle number of all the numbers when you list them in order from largest to smallest. So if most of the individual earnings are at either the high end or the low end, the median would be then higher or lower than the average or the mean. So almost 20% of retailers lost money in 2020 and 0.7% lost over $10,000. Half of the retailers earned between one and $5,000, and that's a really wide range, and I wish they'd split that up further, but just assuming the high end of $5,000 and part-time work of 20 hours per week, that works out to $4.81 per hour. About 3% earned over $75,000, and considering the million dollar leadership checks that I was seeing people get in LuLaRoe's heyday, that is quite the fall. Something else we're not seeing here is a breakdown of earnings by years with the company. So I bet most of those high earners have been with LuLaRoe for several years and built teams and more successful businesses when it was more popular. And something a lot of MLMs say to explain the low consultant earnings is that a lot of people join the company just for a discount or just to get the new consultant kit and they never really intend to sell or sell to others. And that's really just not possible with LuLaRoe because by joining, you are getting hundreds of pieces of random clothing in a variety of sizes. So it's not like you're just going to join to pick things out for yourself or to get a discount for yourself because your orders are all kind of mystery orders. So the people who make that big investment of joining LuLaRoe are really expecting that they are going to make a profit selling clothes. 
So the next section is about the leadership compensation plan profits. And LuLaRoe says that 15% of retailers earned leadership compensation or participated in the plan and 85% did not. So across all retailers, the average leadership earnings were $1,200 with a median of $0. And considering that 85% didn't participate, that makes sense. For retailers who earned leadership compensation, the average earnings were $8,500, but the median was only $500. And the graph reflects that over 77% of participants earned zero to $4,999 in leadership compensation. 2.35% earned over $75,000 in leadership compensation. But when I was with LuLaRoe, some consultants were earning tens of thousands of dollars per month in leadership bonuses. Something else that's not mentioned here, and maybe they don't do it anymore, is a profit sharing bonus. I was never within the range to do this, so I didn't really pay attention at the time, but I think when I was with LuLaRoe, if you were at a high level of leadership, like a mentor level, you also received some kind of points or a percentage of LuLaRoe's overall profits or something, so I don't know if that's something they're still doing, and if it is, if it's included in those numbers. The next graph is retail profits for clothing sales only. And it's very similar to the first one that included both retail profit and leadership bonuses. Again, because as we have just heard, not a lot of people are even getting leadership bonuses. So the average gross profit on retail sales of LuLaRoe products was only $8,800. And the median was less than $1,500. Again, not including costs other than the wholesale purchase of inventory. So according to the graph, 50% of retailers earn between one and $5,000. And so considering the median of 1500, most are probably on the low end of that range. And remember this doesn't include expenses like shipping. So for example, a pair of leggings cost you $7 and 50 cents and you sell them for $25, but it costs $6 to ship them. So you would net $11.50 on that pair of leggings, but it's reflected here as $17.50 because they're not including your shipping costs. And maybe in earlier years, a lot of retailers did a lot of their sales in person, but I think especially for 2020, I'm sure most of the sales were online and required shipping. And also similar to that first graph that included the leadership bonuses, you can see almost 20% of retailers lost money. And then the last thing that's on the page is kind of their caveats and footnotes. So there is a list of the types of expenses that are not included, and they include things uh, like startup costs, like hangers, racks, camera equipment, business cards, printers, etc. cetera, um, ongoing costs like your postage, shipping supplies, advertising, travel expenses, insurance, and services like an accountant or a bookkeeper. And they also list an attorney as one of those services, which makes me wonder what they think people are doing if the average legging salesperson needs a lawyer ongoing for their business, but okay. And then there's a final statement that's kind of the standard wording that you see on these sorts of disclosures that it isn't intended to be a promise or a projection of your personal results. But something they added is that the results depend on both things you can control like your own effort and things you can't control like demand in the market. And I wanna dive into this a little more because they specifically give examples of factors within your control as hard work, dedication, diligence, creativity, business experience, perseverance, etc. And that sounds like a really easy way to blame the retailers themselves for low earnings. Like, I guess you just weren't diligent and creative enough. So minimum wage in the United States is currently $7.25 an hour. If you worked full time, 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year, you'd earn a little over $15,000. If you sold LuLaRoe in 2020, you had a 15.34% chance of earning at least that much. And again, that's before your other expenses that weren't accounted for here. So if you want to see how this all compared to my personal experience and keep in mind 
this was in LuLaRoe's heyday. I did a video previously where I read through all of my expenses from my first year selling LuLaRoe. And after that first year, which really was six months because I started in July um, and had those startup costs then, I did turn a profit each subsequent year. But when I add up all of my income and all of my expenses for my entire time with LuLaRoe, I had a profit about $10,000 total in two years. So luckily I wasn't trying to support myself with this. I was really selling LuLaRoe for fun. I didn't have any plans to quit my day job. That was actually what allowed me to afford this hobby. Um, but hopefully you found this breakdown and interpretation interesting. So if you did, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing because I do have this kind of ongoing series where I share my personal experience with selling LuLaRoe. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.